So you made something you're proud of. You worked hard on your design. You maybe prototyped it a couple of times, and then you went and used that extremely expensive, irreplaceable piece of wood from Grandpappy's Mantle Place from the home he built in Kansas in 1900. I can never get that back. What do you do? How do you expertly alter that piece, which is irreplaceable, with new details and perhaps fixing features that are already on it? It's a two-part process. It's one part software, one part locating everything correctly on the machine. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with sweet precision because every one of these holes in this cribbage board needs to be incrementally larger. Therefore, the positioning of this piece has to be perfect. We're about to build your CNC skills right now. Open the file you want to modify. For me, it's the top of this cribbage board, and step one is rotating the entire design 90 degrees so it's vertical. You'll see when we get to the work holding why this matters for alignment. Drag it up near your origin, and we're going to go lower left for the origin on this file. In order to accurately move all the elements of this design, I'm going to group all the vectors. Next up is use of the alignment tool. We're going to align to stock. First align left, then align bottom. And here's where a mistake could have jumped right in. That outermost line is actually a chamfer line, so it does not represent the outer edge that was cut as a contour cut when this piece was originally made. I need to delete that line and then align left and align bottom with the actual contour that ended up being the outside of this top of the cribbage board. With the part now aligned properly, I set about making the modifications to the holes and one other area inside of my design. Our next step involves creating a known left edge that is 100% square to our gantry. My plan is to use this piece of plywood and a pocketing toolpath in Carbide Create. So I'm going to make this just wide enough so that a quarter inch end mill can run up and back throughout that pocket. I had to resize it, but eventually dialed it in. With the geometry in that file all set, I measured the depth of my plywood, and this is critical. Always use calipers and measure your stock accurately. I chose to use a pocketing toolpath for this. You could definitely use a contour or even create some other way to do it. It's all up to you. You're the artist. Now onto the machine, and we need to set our X, Y, zero point. To make sure we get all of this face, my Y zero point is going to be just in front of where the plywood is located, and my X point will be however much I want to cut back on that face. In this case, I don't need very much. Next, we're going to set Z, and that's done with the paper method here. You're going to see bit zero come into play momentarily. Ready to run, and we're just going to go back and forth. This is simple. All we're doing is dialing in the alignment along Y. We know we're 100% square to the gantry, and we're going to get consistent results. And there's a perfectly measured Z. Doesn't that look nice when you end up with that? Pro tip, go ahead and sand that top edge because those sharp edges can cut you. Now, when positioning our pre-existing part, you could put it right up against that plywood. That would work fine. No problem there. Here, I want to space it out a little bit, and I want to show you what I do with 321 blocks. I use those to not only maintain a square alignment to the machine to our known edge at this point, but also to position it for work holding. So you can see a couple different alignments didn't work here. I'm going to get two clamps right in the middle of my stock. That's how I want it. 321 blocks, terrific for giving you that kind of work holding flexibility, allowing you to move a workpiece out into space while maintaining that square alignment. Back to why I rotated my art initially, it was to align the longer side of the part with that left side edge guide. And yes, you could have cut an X guide, but you wouldn't leave an X guide on your machine, whereas a Y guide, you can leave it on the left side of your machine for a long time. Okay, bit zero has arrived, and you need to make sure he's clear of any clamps. Running the corner probe cycle has X, Y, and Z set accurately. With that, the software work is done. The hardware setup is complete. It's time to run this file. Keep yourself ready at the pause button. Make sure the machine goes where you expect it. And then with this particular project, because I have inner chamfers on each one of those cribbage pinholes, I can tell if this thing is dead on. Looking good so far. I'm going to let it run, which means it's time to kick up the music for a montage.
Wait, what if life came with a fast forward button? Wouldn't that be nice? You could just go through the boring stuff. Here, last two holes finish up and then I'm gonna cut a little pocket here. I didn't like the way that winter lettering turned out. It got moved in one of my design changes. So my new plan is to fill it with epoxy. This project has worked out. Modifications made success with another project. This is now exactly how I want it. But more importantly, we've given you the CNC skills and the knowledge to precisely locate anything, whether it's your own project or perhaps something someone gave you and said, I want 25 of these or 50 of these or a thousand of these modified in this way. If you model it, you can make that money. And after you do, come back here to the studio. We'll be here with more information, ideas, and inspiration. <laughs>